Please welcome back to the stage, Doug Rothwell, President and CEO, Business Leaders for Michigan. So my job now is to actually go through some numbers with you to back up what Albert and Barry did a great job talking about here this morning. And uh, I just want to reinforce uh, the last words that they both said, which is that we at our organization, Business Leaders for Michigan, really try to base what we do uh, and our ideas and our plans not on kind of what we think, but on what the facts and the research actually says. And that means we need to know how Michigan stacks up to our competitors, not how we feel about the progress that we're making. It's why we've been benchmarking ourselves every year since we were formed about six years ago. We compare ourselves to states we traditionally compete with, like Ohio and Indiana. We compare ourselves to states that we think have transitioned to the new economy pretty well, like California and Virginia. But most importantly, we also compare ourselves to the top 10 performing states in the nation. And that's really important. And the reason why is because we need to know where we are competitive and where we're not. We use this data to develop the strategy for becoming a top 10 state for jobs, personal incomes, and a healthy economy. Today, in your materials, we're issuing the 2015 benchmarking report. To complete that report, we looked at 50 different metrics. And we need to look at that many to really understand how competitive the state is. But why does competitiveness matter? Just look at where we could be if we were a top 10 state. You just heard from Albert, who said we ignore what other states are doing at our own peril. Folks, other states aren't standing still. They want to be top 10, too, and they're working hard to get there. So how are we doing? Well, I guess I'd say, in a word, better. The benchmarking report shows that Michigan outperformed the nation in a number of areas. But don't get too excited. Because while we've been growing like a top 10 state the past few years, we are still a long way from being a top 10 state. While our growth has been faster than others, in absolute terms, we are still below average. Look at these numbers that are up on the screen. These are the vital statistics, if you will, that show how healthy Michigan's economy really is. And while we're off the life support we were on a few years ago, we're really not ready yet to play in the championship game. Before we take a look at some of the metrics that drive the results I just showed you, please know that we've tried to make the information in the report as easy as possible to read. So you don't need to be a mathematician to kind of figure out what the numbers mean. In the report, for every metric, we give you Michigan's rank, the absolute level of performance, the top 10 average, whether we're trending positive or negative or not. And the rankings are based that number one is best, number 50 is the worst performer in each category. So now we're going to do a little pop quiz. See how well you know your home state so you can grab your cell phones and uh, compete along with the others in the room. To submit your answers, follow the instructions that are up here on the screen. And let's go ahead and uh, put up the first question. A is true, B is false. Do we know what the results were? OK. Well, we'll show you, we'll show you the uh, next question maybe now. Let's go to the next uh, number two. How many of you think that's true versus false? Pretty close. Let's show the answer. So let's, let's actually get into some of the data. We evaluate the metrics from the perspective of what value you get 
for your money. The states that offer the most value for money tend to become the top performing states, just like it is in business. Specifically, we categorize the metrics in two buckets, those that measure the cost of doing business in the state and those that measure the value you get for being here. So let's back, look back where we were in 2009. Our costs were generally at or above the national average, that means bad, and on most metrics we were getting worse. Examples for, were our poor corporate tax climate, our low national business climate rankings. Now today, Michigan is at or even sometimes better than the national average on most of the cost measures, and we're improving on most of them. Our corporate tax climate's getting dramatically better, our business climate rankings continue to improve. That's good. But here's the chart that concerns us. Look at how we've relatively lost ground on the value we provide for being here. Like costs, back in 2009, we ranked low on most of the metrics. But unlike the cost metrics, we were treading water rather than continuing to get worse on them. For example, our infrastructure problems hadn't really started to escalate just yet. Our talent challenges were masked by the high unemployment that we had. But by 2014, we see the evidence of really the cost of failing to deal with these issues and deal with more progress over the last decade because other states aren't standing still. Our infrastructure got worse because we didn't invest and other states did. Our talent production improved, but not as fast as other places did. Now here's a slide, this next one, that is another way of looking at this issue. When you look at where Michigan stands on all the cost and value metrics combined, we score average or above on about 40% of them. Not too bad. But if you just look at the value metrics, we score below average on 80% of them. That's a problem. Because while the cost of doing business in a state will always be important, and we've made real progress here, the value you get from being in a given location is equally, if not becoming, more important. And that's our challenge to improving these numbers, improving the value we offer for being in Michigan. Think of our challenge this way. We live in a world where the biggest taxi company does not own vehicles. The biggest lodging and hospitality business has no real estate. We are a company that is entirely virtual, Facebook, has a market cap nearly twice that of the three of the most capital-intensive companies in America, GM, Ford, Fiat Chrysler, combined. These companies are just a few examples of how our economy is undergoing seismic changes. Every well-established company, even well-established companies in so-called traditional lines of business are radically changing. Think our car companies. They're transforming into becoming mobility ones. The leaders in our office furniture industry don't think of themselves as producing furniture, they think of themselves as productivity consultants. Tom Kelly, our keynote speaker, is gonna talk more about these changes later, but the companies that are gonna thrive in this new world that we're in have some common needs. They need access to top talent. They need places that cultivate and thrive on innovation, that leverage their assets, governments that fully support them. The places that get this recipe right are the ones that are going to thrive. Let's start with one ingredient, having a great supply of educated and skilled talent. If you look at the jobs that will be available in the future, the gap between what those jobs require and what Michigan's producing today is incredibly large. More and more jobs are requiring people to have an education beyond high school. And while the level of highly educated talent available in Michigan has increased, in the last decade, we still rank among the bottom half of all states. We're slightly below average in terms of the technical talent available in Michigan. While the number of critical skill degrees and certificates awarded per capita in our state has increased 50% since 2005, the level of degrees awarded are still 12% lower than top 10 averages in 2014. This was one of your pop quiz questions. I mean, seriously. How can Michigan compete when only 22% of our high school graduates are considered career or college ready? While the percentage of college and career ready graduates improved some last year, Michigan is in the bottom half of all states and was outranked by all but three 
of our peer states. We heard about how our population isn't growing that much, which means we're becoming a smaller market to be in. Now, our population has stabilized and has actually begun to increase the past few years, but our population growth was slower than all of our peers except for Illinois. That shows up in our median age. Michigan was among the top 10 oldest states in 2013 with the ninth highest median age, and that means we have fewer young people to fill the jobs we're trying to create and many older ones we need to take care of, like me. That's higher than all of our peers and all of the top 10 states except for Pennsylvania. The rate of out-of-state enrollments at higher education institutions in Michigan was less than half of the top 10 average in 2012 and trailed all but four states in the nation. This is important because we're getting older and our population isn't growing much. Now, on a positive note, we're generating a lot of innovation in Michigan. Our research universities rank sixth in the nation, higher than all of the top 10 states except Massachusetts. And we've also historically been a state with very high industry research and development rankings as well. But our research isn't being translated as much into entrepreneurial activity as we'd like to see. We've improved in recent years, but we still rank below average on this measure. We also have great assets in Michigan. Barry and Albert talked about some of these that can be leveraged to drive economic growth. We call those at Business Leaders for Michigan our new Michigan assets, our auto industry, our natural resources, our geographic location and medical expertise, our engineering talent, our higher education institutions. But we're not taking full advantage of these assets because we keep vacillating on how much to focus on them or how much to invest in them from election cycle to election cycle. And finally, let's look at something Barry touched on in his comments, the level of economic development support Michigan provides. It's average, it's trending downward, and top 10 states are spending more than twice as much as Michigan is. So the point of all this data is not to make us feel bad. It is to get us motivated and to inspire us to be better. We have made great progress in Michigan, becoming a more cost-competitive state, and that is extremely important, but it's not enough. To be a top 10 state, we also need to improve the value that Michigan offers. That means more talent, leveraging our innovation and assets, and more support for economic development. We're better, but better's not good enough. It's not in business, it's not for our organizations, it shouldn't be for our state. We shouldn't want to be or complacent being average. We should be want, wanting to be one of the best. And if we look at the data, the data tells us very clearly where it is that we can make that difference to become that top 10 state that we all in the business community believe we absolutely can and should become. Thanks very much.